Okay, guys, good evening. It is uh, 6.20 p.m. on Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, video here on two things. One, to uh, do a brief review of the RBA, Royal Bank of Australia's rate decision from um, uh, earlier today or last night, depending where in the world you were. Uh, that came out at 12.30 a.m. New York time, so, uh, you know, about two-thirds of the way through the Asian session uh, today. And uh, and then a little quick look at the next big one that's coming up in about three and a half hours from now, being the new uh, the RBNZ, the Royal Bank of New Zealand's rate decision statement and press conference. So uh, first, uh, in regards to the RBA, so basically what ended up happening is I was saying last night, guys, the market was about 50-50 split. Uh, at best on a uh, rate cut. And so it was felt that, you know, if they cut, uh, it, of course, it would be weak for the Aussie. But if they didn't cut, um, it would depend on the statement. And people were expecting, you know, a dovish no cut. In other words, so they didn't cut, but they were still really dovish in their uh, statement. So they did not cut. Um, and the statement, although it still had some dovish tones, wasn't as dovish as people had thought. So during the Asian session, the Aussie actually rallied um, pretty much right out of the gate and then it stopped, which, again, a lot of that is attributable to the fact that it's just lower liquidity, lower volume during Asia. It's a completely different set of traders at, at that time. And then what we saw during the London session is the uh, a lot of that retracing, and that's pretty much still going on. But, um you know, some of the theory is that uh, because there's uh, national elections coming up in Australia a couple of weeks, that they felt like there was a political angle to that. They didn't want to cut rates just before the election. Maybe it doesn't look good. I don't know. Um, and they feel that, um, you know, basically uh, down the road, once the election's out of the way, the next time they meet in a few months, that if things don't improve, they'll cut at that point. So that, of course, remains to be seen. Um so the RBA did uh, put out some good forward guidance, and they did make very clear in their statement that um, they uh, would be looking at the at the job market and the labor market going forward. So that is a big, bold, giant neon sign to traders that any upcoming uh, employment news, uh, job news, whatever that the um, that Australia puts out over the coming weeks needs to be watched very closely and probably will be very market moving because the, you know, the, the, the market knows that that's what the RBA is going to be looking at um, in terms of uh, whether they're going to cut. And some other people are saying, well, the, the, the Aussie will continue to, to uh, go down now in anticipation of a cut at the next meeting. And we'll just basically price it in over the coming weeks. So, um, but I, I'd be more apt to say, you know, let's, let's look at the, at the labor data. And so, uh, so that's pretty much what happened. Um, you know, they did have concerns about uh, weakness in wages and inf inflation. Inflation actually ticked down a little bit in the last report. And so they still had some concerns about that, but they had some positive things to say, too. Um, this was, um, uh, yeah, this was posted uh, last night, uh, a couple hours after the news came out. So, you know, here's the dovish part of it, you know, inflation noticeably lower than expected. Um, further improvement in the labor market needs to meet inflation target. Um, conditions remain soft in housing, expects the economy to grow 2.75 in 2019, 2020. That's actually pretty good. Sees underlying inflation ticking up, you know, to 1.75 later this year, 2% next year. Aussie's at the lower end of its narrow range, which means, you know, expecting it probably to go from up from there and, you know, risk limited to the downside or uh, tilted to the downside. And again, you know, their emphasis on the labor market with the key to their next decision and the possible political angle. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens from here. Uh, this particular writer says, you know, he'll be looking to fade the rallies. In other words, sell on the rallies. Um, but, you know, obviously that's that's one person's opinion and that might be the right one. I don't know yet. So, um, you know, so that's basically what happened. If you look at, uh, you know, I'm not going to look at a lot of pairs, but 
you know, here, this is the Aussie Kiwi. We saw this move up. This is when the news came out last night. Aussie yen right here. I mean, pretty much the same, you know, big green candle on all of these uh, were shot up. And, you know, then it pretty much has taken all day today to retrace um, these these numbers. So, um, you know, we're kind of, this is the Aussie dollar, for instance. And, you know, we're kind of back at some key support, you know, previous resistance here, now, pre, now support. So, um, so we'll see, you know, I mean, I still think there's some upside here in the Aussie, um, but, uh, I think we need to get the New Zealand news out of the way first. So, uh, that's what happened with the Aussie. So more to come on that, but keep an eye on labor and, uh, job numbers, uh, yeah, going forward with the Aussie, uh, for real direction. So now the other big one that's coming out later is on the New Zealand dollar. And this is on my Forex source terminal. Volatility risk is at 90%. And uh, again, the market is um, kind of split. I was just reading on Forex Factory, on, I mean, excuse me, on Forex Live, that it's actually has diminished. Um, you know, I was reading one story. It, says it was down to like 36% chance of a cut. So, of course, the RBNZ, you know, uh, struck a more dovish tone, uh, surprised the market last month. And then we had CPI numbers disappoint. Um, and so there was, um, you know, some thought that they would um, cut rates by a quarter point. And uh, when they surveyed these uh, 15 analysts, eight expected to cut, seven expected to remain on hold. So again, here we go again, you know, with, um, so with some indecision. Um, so uh, so probably what will happen if they cut, there'll be some weakness. If they don't cut, then it might rally. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, but even if, the, again, the, this comment, even if they leave it unchanged, uh, but suggest future easing remains likely, the key we will strength will likely be somewhat limited. So, again, guys, this is going to come down to what is in the statement, uh, especially if they don't cut. So if they do cut, and then you can expect that it's going to be pretty negative for the kiwi and the kiwi is going to sell off if they don't cut then you need to really pay attention to the statement and see how they're kind of positioning things going forward okay and that'll be the key there is going to be a press conference after so although we don't really learn anything new with the press conference um you know everything that's in the press conference is probably in the statement but sometimes what happens is um price kind of bounces around during the press conference you know and once it's over and, you know, everything's out of the way, then the market tends to get its footing and decides which way it wants to go. So that can make for, uh, you know, some uneasiness to start. Um, so that's it on the Kiwi, guys. Uh, again, a little bit of um, indecision on what's going to happen. And depending what happens is, you know, depends how we're going to go here. Right. So um, what else here? So, uh, yeah, this is... Um, some stories that are on Forex Live. And uh, again, once again, we've got different views from different banks here. So, um, you know, basically some of them saying it, it's not enough for them to cut right now. Other ones saying, yeah, they're definitely going to cut. So you can go and read all this if you want. Um, you know, this this story here is pretty good. Um, and it's got uh, links to, a, you know, a few different uh, um a few different uh, views of this but basically that's that's what it is and, you know is it has the data been negative enough for them to cut and if it has then the kiwi will continue to be pressured if, if it's not then it depends how uh you know what the statement looks like um you know in terms of the charts and what have you um you know of course the kiwi has been going down for quite a while um you know, so here we are sitting at, at these levels now. This is the Kiwi Swiss. There's Kiwi Yen. It's been really, you know, hammered. You know, we're at the lows right now of this range. Um, Kiwi Canadian. I mean, all, all the Kiwi pairs have been down. I think an, an interesting pair here is Aussie Kiwi. So you look at Aussie Kiwi. Uh, the Aussie Kiwi has really bucked the trend on the Aussie, and this is mainly because of Kiwi weakness that we broke this long downtrend that we were on here. We broke through here a while ago, a couple of weeks back. And uh, we rally, 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 then we've pulled back. And now, um, you know, coming off the news, uh, 
uh, last night, you know, this was the candle uh, when the Aussie news came out last night. And uh, then we, you know, we sold off a little bit today. And now we look like we're heading, trying to head back up again. And this little move down does look like correction or potentially a uh, wave four. So I think, you know, on a shorter time frame, we could be looking at like, you know, say this is a one, two, three, four, five, and we'll see. Um, so my, you know, if, if this bears out during the Aussie, during the Kiwi news tonight, so we could see maybe a little initial weakness in the Kiwi, um, and then maybe it ends the trend, and then we sell off a little bit, and then we start going up again. So uh, this is one, you know, where I'll be watching the pattern. Um, you know, this is only a two-hour chart, so this isn't really a lot of pips here. So one good spike up could, you know, end this little trend to the upside here. And uh, go to the one-hour chart. You know, this could easily be a one, two, three, four, up for five, and then that's it. But on a longer-term time frame, this certainly looks like it's got more upside to go. So. So my, my gut is that uh, inevitably this will be weak for the Kiwi that, you know, maybe they don't, you know, at least by the way the chart's looking. Again, guys, this is strictly based on how the chart looks. Um, how the chart looks to me is that right now is that they probably won't cut rates. So the, um, you know, so the, the Kiwi, you know, will maybe initially come down, maybe will spike and come down. And then uh, eventually, um, when the market chews on all of the statement and the press conference, that it'll continue to weaken and the Aussie maybe will strengthen a little bit and we'll get more move to the upside on the Aussie Kiwi. So uh, that's how I'm looking at it, but we'll see. I'll be watching again tonight. And again, from a standpoint of the news, Everything is like pretty much all at once. Cash rate, monetary policy, RBA state, uh, RBNZ statement. I don't think they changed any of that. Yeah, it all still says ten o'clock. So, um, um, yeah. No, then the press conference will be at eleven. So we'll get obviously get the cash rate, monetary policy statement, rate statement all at once, and the press conference an hour later. So be prepared that this could then turn into a couple of hours before we really know what's going to happen here. And again, this is happening during the Asian session. So always some question about what this will do once London reopens. So, so I have to just take a look, see at, the, especially at the statement and what they're thinking going forward. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe listen in on the, on the press conference. Although, you know, we don't usually learn anything new at the press conference, just, they're just going to be reading a prepared statement and then taking questions from the press. And um, like I said, I, you know, you don't usually learn anything. A anything they really want you to know is going to be in the statement. And the um, the press conference is really just a way for the press to get their questions in and um, get the, uh, you know, get the bank uh, guys to say it in a different way. So anyway, so that's it, guys. I'll make a follow up after that um, on that. But that's a summary of the uh, RBA and the RBNZ upcoming. So uh, that's it, guys. Be careful uh, trading it. And uh, but could be a good opportunity. We'll see uh, how it ends up shaking out. And again, with the uh, with the Australian dollar, I still think in the short term, we'll, we'll have some support with the Aussie. I do think inevitably it'll start coming back down. But in the short term, I think we'll see some strength. So um, but yeah, I mean, if, um, you know, if, if the market is thinking this, there eventually is going to be a rate cut maybe after the elections, then uh, we'll see. Although, again, it's going to be data dependent on job numbers. So keep an eye on your um, Forex factory or economic calendar for Australian, um, you know, employment news uh, coming up over the coming weeks. So that's it, guys. Talk to you all soon. Have a good rest of your evening.